Now, you know, I've said this before, that air is so important underwater. You have no idea. You may have heard me say that before. Alec Pierce, scuba. And today, I'm going to show you how to fill a scuba tank. I don't mean I'm going to show you how to fill a scuba tank. I'm going to show you how a scuba tank ought to be filled. And every dive store is a little bit different. So I'm not being critical. I'm just telling you the proper way for a scuba tank to be filled. And then you take that information and watch the next time you tank, your tank, uh, you take your tank in. Or maybe there's some dive store professionals out there who are looking at this and say, gosh, you know, I could do that. Maybe there's some ideas here for you. Here's what should happen. So Kevin's walked in and he is entrusting me as the dive store professional to properly fill his tank. Here's what happens. First of all, I say, Kevin, how you doing, bud? You got your sea card with you? Now, I happen to know that Kevin is a certified diver. However, if I did not know Kevin personally, if I had not already personally inspected his certification previously, then I would ask. Now, I might not say, you got to have a sea card, you can't get a fill, because that would be nasty and I'm trying to build a business. So I would say, hey, you going diving? Great, where are you going? And he would tell me, oh, that's fantastic. Now, listen, don't forget to take your sea card, because it's a boat captain. You know? If you got your sea card with you, I should really take a look at it. So I would build that request into a conversation to make it sound good. Point number one. The dive store ought to ask for your certification card. Again, if they know you really well, they may not do that. Okay? So now the next thing the dive store operator, tank fill station operator, ought to do, he should check the tank. Wow. And again, he will build us into the conversation. He'll say, Wow, nice tank. You look at it. Whoa, pretty color. Nice tank. Where'd you get this tank? Yeah, that's really nice. Good boot on it, too. He could care less. He looks at thousands of tanks. By the time I finished in the retail business after 47 years, if I never saw another scuba tank for the rest of my life, I'd be a happy person. He doesn't care about your tank. Well, other than you're a customer, he cares in that respect. What he's doing is building into the conversation while he inspects your tank. He's looking for any damage, abuse, salt, corrosion, possibly rust. He's making sure the boot is on, that everything is in good shape, that the valve isn't banged around or is not at a funny angle or anything. He's looking to ensure that your tank is in pretty good condition. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Next, next thing he's going to do is going to check the tank to be sure the tank is safe to be filled. Because we get tanks coming into the dive store. We still get tanks in from the 60s. And there's no problem with that. Some of those old, old tanks, old steel tanks are excellent. But they do have to be tested. And have to be in good condition. We've checked the condition. So now he has to inspect to be sure that the tank is, in fact, safe and legal, quite frankly, to be filled. So the first thing he does is take out his glasses, if he's my age anyway. And then he takes a look at the tank. And he says, okay, let's just make sure everything's good here, Kevin. And that it is, okay, 517. So this is only a year old. Nice tank. And an 80 and like that. Everything looks really good, so it's in hydro. And you have your visual. I think you had this done just a few months ago, didn't you, Kevin? You see? making the guy feel good as he checks to make sure it's legal, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Yep, okay, good. Yeah, that was inspected, so you're good that way. And, um, and while he's doing that, he's doing one more thing. He's checking to see the pressure rating. Now, again, <clears throat> I've trained an awful lot of store staff over the years. And I've been to hundreds, if not thousands, of dive stores over the years. And I've seen mistakes made. This is an aluminum 80. 90% of them are 3,000 PSI. 90%, not all of them. Steel tanks, most of them are 3,442. Some are 3,500. An awful lot of them are 2,400. That's right. So you've got to look. You cannot assume that the tank pressure of this standard looking aluminum 80 is 3,000. There it is right there, 3,000 PSI. Okay, so we're all done checking the tank. Everything's all set. So here's what I do next. Great, Kevin, I'll get this filled for you. But listen, have you seen the, the new lights we have out front? Why don't you scoot out front while I fill this? You should really leave anyway, leave the area. So I'm gonna, if you go take a look at those. And also, oh, by the way, we got a, a new poster down about the trip to Bon Air down by the travel department. Go and check that out, would you, bud? And I'll have this filled up for you in just a minute. That's called politely clearing the area. That's right. I know that this is not always necessarily the practice that you have seen in dive stores, but customers should not be close to the fill station. This is going to sound kind of funny, it may be a little bit cruel, but dive store employees are paid to face the risk of filling tanks. 
customers are not. You do not need the aggravation. So one thing that should be part of a proper tank fill is clear the area. Okay, Kev, so tell me what you think of those lights. Take a look at them. They've got different colors too. Go on, take a look at them and let me know what you think. I'll have this done in just a minute, okay? And he leaves the area. And then you go ahead and fill the tank. The tank fill itself is really straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. And every tank fill station is slightly different. Generally speaking, what happens is there's a filler whip. That's what it's called, a filler whip. The operator, after the customer has left, will let a bit of air out. Make sure that there's no dirt in that hole. He will quickly check the O-ring to make sure it's pretty fresh. This is almost a new tank, so it's pretty good shape. Make sure the O-ring is in good shape. That is there. I can't tell you how many times I get tanks in for fills and there is no O-ring. Then he'll install the whip properly, close the purge, open the tank valve, and read the pressure in the tank. 800 PSI, that's good. If it was less than 100 PSI, then he'd have the, the tough job of telling Kevin that he might have to have another visual examination. But Kevin's a pretty good diver, so he never gets below 500 PSI if he can avoid it. Uh, this is good, 800 PSI. And then he would set the, the, the uh, uh, control panel, depending on how automatic it is. This is an automatic control panel. So on this panel, we actually set the pressure for this tank. So 3,000, 3,000. And then we simply open the bank, and the tank fills just that easy. And when it gets to the right pressure, it bleeds off shuts off the tank. Just that easy. That part, the actual technical process of filling the tank, is pretty straightforward and is really up to the technician. If he wants to share how that's done with you, fantastic. And then, when it's all done, opens it up, bleeds off the air, takes the filler whip off, and he's all done, right? No, he's not all done. Because when he sets this tank down over there with those other 27 tanks, he has no idea if it's been filled or not. So the very important last step is to take the tape, tank fill tape, take a piece of tank fill tape, put it over the opening, and tear off a piece. Just like that. So now the tank is taped. A lot of people mistakenly think that that tape is on there to keep dirt and water out of the hole. Not a bad idea, not a bad assumption. But if you look closely, you'll find that most tank tape doesn't cover the hole. So if that's its function, it's not doing a very good job of it. It is really there as an indication that the, that tank is full, okay? And that also puts some responsibility on the diver. What that means is when you use that tank, you take the tape off. First of all, don't throw it in the water. Put it in your pocket or stick it to the tank or something like that. Do your dive. When you come back, do not put the tape back on. Do not put the tape back on. Remember, that tape indicates that tank is full. Don't put it back on. That's it. That's easy. On the screen, on, on, on the view there, you can see those five points. Review them just quickly. Watch the video again. You'll see exactly where they are and how it should, <clears throat> should fit into a conversation with your local dive store and see how, how good a job they're doing. That's not the only way to do it, but it is 47 years of experience. Certainly the proper way to do it. Anyway, I hope you learned something in there, guys. Talk to you again real soon. Maybe I'll show you actually how the filler station actually works. That's pretty interesting, too. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierscuba, Tech Tips.